Hi guys. So I'm really excited today. Um, just to start off, my name's Alliance for those who don't know me. Um, this is my page. Um, I basically talk about food and I talk about faith. So right now I'm really excited. During the whole month of May, we're doing like this um, prayer challenge. It's a March 11th, 24 prayer challenge. If you want to know more about it, you can just go scroll on the page and you can see it. So basically it's saying in Mark 11, 24, it talks about if you ask for a thing, if you believe in faith that you can get it, you will then receive it. And so we're doing that prayer challenge all in March of May. Every Monday morning, come on 6 a.m., do a live prayer. And then just throughout the week or throughout the month or whatever, we've been basically doing prayers. Praying basically and to base the whole point of this to increase our faith. That's the whole point of the challenge. That's one part of this page, but then also the other part of it is where I talk about food. And so when I talk about food, we're doing different nutrition mini courses. Um, the last couple ones I've done have been meal prep. So um, the month of March and April, I did meal prep. So I used to meal prep with me, basically letting you guys come in and see how do I, how I normally would do my meal prep. Um, the ones before that were more lesson based, so I was picking a particular topic. I talked about different diets one time. I talked about how to make healthy goals and how to make goals that you can actually stick with. That was around December. Um, so I've done quite a few of these basically starting December to now. And so this week, um, well for the month of May, I decided, you know, this whole, um, I really enjoyed doing the meal prep. I think you guys really like seeing me cook as well. Uh, I think you really have fun with those. But um, the thing is, I don't meal prep on Thursday, so for me to meal prep on Thursday, that means I'm going to have a lot of food in my house at a weird time. Usually, I meal prep on Sundays, and then by the time Thursday, Friday comes around, I'm usually pretty much done meal prepping. Like, my meal prep for the week is pretty much done, because on, like, Saturdays and Sundays, I might typically, like, eat out. So, to cook that much for a Thursday night, knowing that I usually eat out on the weekend, it's like, mm, it was cool, like, the first couple of months, so I was like, okay. What's something that's a little bit more sustainable? Because honestly, guys, I showed you guys my really, like, almost my best recipes, to be honest. So, like, I'm run, I was running out of stuff to talk about for one, and also I was just like, mm, I don't know, this might get bored real quick. So that's how I came up with Snack and Chat. And I was like, okay, you guys like it doing recipes. I like to cook. I like to cook. I like to talk, and I like to cook. And so, but what's something a little bit more manageable for me? These Snack and Chats. So I'm going to show you guys the recipes, and then we're just going to chat. I'm going to have two topics that I kind of want to cover. Um, one of them is talking about is this healthy or not, and kind of almost going a little bit more into detail on the topic we talked about previously when I was talking about different diets. Um, we're just going to go a little bit deeper into that. And then the second one is just talking about detox, because guys, it's detox season. Everybody's talking about detoxes because they want to get right for summer. So we're going to break that down a little bit more. I've talked about these things before, but just to, you know, now that it's really like in our faces as far as the media and everything, I really want to take some time to really... Um, talk about it again and to really, you know, tell you guys all I think about, everything I think about. So, today I'm really excited. So, um, I have this recipe. The recipe I have came from, I went to a farm to school um, regional meeting um, a couple days, like two days ago, and they, one of the things they did, they had farmers bring like some of their crops that are like in season right now, and they had someone prepare them. So like the thing is with farm to school, uh, we want it works for everybody. It works for the farmers because the farmer feels like they can give back. They're helping out their community. They're doing good for the kids because then the kids get to eat fresh vegetables. And then the schools really benefit because um, they um, the kids get fresh vegetables. But then they can also the schools help you know financially help the farmers. So it's like a really good like ecosystem that's created when you're doing like the farm to school. And like if you're if it's farm to school, it's gonna be a lot low. It's gonna be local food. So there's less chance of like um, some type of food contamination or anything like that. It's going to be closer to the um, pick. So like when you, once you pick a fruit or vegetable off like the vine or tree or wherever it's come from, that's the point where it stops. Like that's as high of nutrients it's going to get. Typically fruits and vegetables don't get more nutritious after they've been, you know, picked. They usually de deteriorate after that. So the more, the closer your fruit is to you, the more nutritious it, it is. So like if you're going to the farmer's market, if you're going to like a store that buys local food, that means your food is gonna have your food has traveled less a less a fewer amount of distance to get to you. So that means it's gonna be more nutritious. So it's like, what's the point of eating all these fruits and vegetables if you're like if they're not nutritious, they don't have any nutrients in it? You know, like you might as well just go eat a Debbie cake or something. So anyway, I was at this meeting and this was one of the things they tried. And honestly, it was just all this stuff on the table. And I just got a little scoop a little of everything. I was like, I don't even know what this is. I honestly thought it was guacamole, but it wasn't guacamole. It's actually just a pea 
relationship. And like, it's really cool. It's not a lot I did, so it's really super easy. But it actually tastes, tastes really well. So, we're going to, um, I am going to try to make an attempt to flip a camera. This, all right, so I'm going to show you guys basically the basics of the recipe. And so, we have peas. And like, these were frozen peas. Um, originally, like they were frozen. They cost like 77 cents for a 12 ounce bag. And one thing I really like about this recipe is that it's really um, inexpensive. Um, the next ingredient is garlic. And so this is a convenient food, this garlic right here, because it's um, fresh peeled garlic. So the garlic has already been peeled for you. Typically, you know, garlic comes like in that like, I was about to say paper, but you guys know the peeling. You have to peel garlic. So this one's already peeled. But the thing about it was I got this from Walmart. And it was only like $2.87, I think, for this entire bag. Now, this is a quite, this is six ounces of garlic that's already peeled. So in my opinion, like this was worth it. Sometimes you'll see like those convenience foods like the chopped onions, chopped celery, chopped um, carrots, like the zoodles are already made. They're going to be a lot more expensive, but I thought this was actually a really good value for the um, amount of money that it is. Because this is a, actually a lot of garlic in this bag. And for like $2 and some change, this was really good. I'm using salt. Um, today, I'm using, there's used pepper, but I decided to use a chipotle just because I was feeling, you know, a little chipotle-ish today. And then some extra virgin olive oil. Now, the next ingredient, well, the last ingredient is Parmesan cheese. And the thing is, though, right now, I'm not doing dairy. And so what I actually found was, I think it's going to be really cool, if you guys can see it. It's called Go Veggie, and it's basically plant-based cheese. And this one is a grated Parmesan. So instead of the regular Parmesan, I'm going to be using this instead. But if I wasn't, like, going, if I wasn't doing dairy-free right now, I would just use regular Parmesan. But because I am, I'm using this, um... This go veggie, but like if you wanted to recreate the um recipe, you can make it with the parmesan. It's really good with the parmesan. I actually tried it with parmesan. I didn't even know there was cheese in it, and that was, that was like a surprise because like oh I'm not really in dairy right now, but because I'm recreating it myself, I'm going to make this switch. But that's the only change in the actual original recipe that I'm using. And what's really cool about this um recipe is the fact that it's really simple to make. It's really easy to make. It's only like literally like two steps. Like. So my peas were frozen when I got them, right? I literally just took some the amount I wanted because I took out two cups left. So I think in the bag, it's probably about three cups of peas in it. So I left the other half in the, fr the other part of it in the refrigerator. And I let them just sit on the counter to defrost. You can also just run like some cool water over them just like you would like shrimp to defrost shrimp. You can do the same thing for your peas. And so just let those defrost. And then after that, you just throw everything in the food processor. And I think that's pretty cool. So this is my food processor. It's a ninja. It's like a little baby one. Um, basically, um, you just pop the top off and like this part is the motor and then it spins that part and that's the food processor. And so it's like you don't even need to have like a lot of fancy like equipment or anything to do this. It's really simple, which is what I really like about this recipe, right? So I have two cups of peas. I already measure out, right? So I'm just going to dump them in here. It's also cool about this recipe is I can do it with one hand because I'm flying solo today. So I can do it with one hand. Isn't that awesome? Um, the next ingredient is my Parmesan cheese, but I'm using my substitute for that. So I get a third of a cup, I think. That's what it is. Yeah. So here's my third of a cup. Just dump some in. And then it's out of a third of a cup, and then I'm just going to dump that in. And what I think is really cool, like, if you smell this cheese, it smells like regular Parmesan. And I tasted it, and it tastes just like regular Parmesan. Like, it's really like a soy base, I think. Actually, it's not even soy base. Um, it has, like, coconut oil, and it has, like, some other different ingredients in it. <clears throat> but, um, there's some that's, like, cashew-based that I've seen, like, on the market. And but they basically they taste just like the regular cheese, which I think is pretty cool. So like if you're using if you have like a vegan diet, like you follow that lifestyle, then um that's this recipe is something you can still use. Um I'm then gonna add two cloves of garlic. So I have my garlic and I'm just gonna add two cloves of my garlic in. And simple, already done, just one and two. And then I'm gonna do a dash of my pepper and 
I like things spicy. So, I'm gonna add a little bit, a little lot. The kind that I had at that meeting wasn't, a, it wasn't particularly spicy. And it's really interesting, like, this one didn't have that much of a flavor. Like, the flavor of it was really neutral. So, I was like, I couldn't quite pick, like, like decide exactly what the flavor of this was. Like, I was like, I think this is guacamole, but I'm not actually sure. And so, like, as I continued to eat it, I was like, huh, it doesn't quite taste like guacamole, but it does a little bit. So, I don't know. And then they told us, oh, it's actually made of peas. And I was like, whoa, that was mind blowing. So I had no idea. And so then the last, I'm just going to add like a dash of salt. And that's about it. And so then I'm just going to put my lid back on. And then I'm just going to pulse it a little bit. So. Pat, just kidding. I showed you guys olive oil. I didn't put any in. It's okay. You just add some olive oil. You get a third of a cup of olive oil too. I was about to say, that looked kind of chunky because <laughs> hers was kind of smooth when she had it but yeah it's because i forgot the olive oil so you do a third of a cup of the olive oil all right so yeah that's the last of it so now we can pulse it through. And so the texture you're kind of looking for is kind of like you don't want to necessarily, well, at least the way I had it, you couldn't really tell what it was. So you kind of want to break down the peas all the way until you can't see, like, you don't see, like, round peas anymore, basically. <laughs> It's really simple. That's what I really like about this one. Like, it's really simple. It was literally like created to like make to be made for kids. So it's like kind of had them in mind when it was created, which I think is pretty cool. Cause in that way, it's like you know your kids are gonna like. If you have kids, they'll like it because it tastes pretty good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, just gonna reposition you guys. Oops. And then put it in my bowl. So yeah. And the thing is, it kind of looks like guacamole for real. And, like, I'm not a big fan of guacamole. Like, I kind of sort of like it, but I don't love it. And so, one of the cool things about this recipe... Well, there's actually a lot of cool things about this recipe, let me tell you. But, one of the cool things is, is that you could use this base as a guacamole um, alternative. So, let me clean that off. And there we have it. So it's like that's our um that's our dip. And so what you could do is one thing you could do is you could use if you added like cilantro, if you added um some jalapeno peppers, if you added some um a little bit of red onion, you could if you added those into the um the dip, it'll basically taste just like guacamole. Like those are the only other ingredients you have to have. And it's like a faux guacamole that's they're telling you that that's what you could possibly have. And I think that's super cool, right? And so I'm basically having these with some um, carrots. So, like, you can have this with chips. You can have it with, they served it with pita bread, and that was good. They had served it with chips, and that was really good. But I got carrot sticks today. And so, that's what I'm eating it with. And so, what does it taste like? It tastes kind of like, you can taste the garlic. You don't really taste a lot from the, um, the peas, really. Like, it mostly, you mostly taste, like, the garlic, the salt, the pepper. It's what, like, the strongest flavors of it. Which is really cool, because that means you can add, like, different stuff with it. So, yeah. And that's our, that's our snack. Now it is time to chat. So, what I want to talk about today. So, um, a couple things I want to talk about. Just a little bit more about the dip, though, and why it's kind of cool. Is that, um, 
you have your green tea, so. This is really good, actually. Mm. Mm. So green peas are really cool, right? Let's say you're trying to compare green peas and um, avocado. Well, with avocado, um, avocados cost more than green peas. See, my bag of green peas was only 77 cents, right? And so then my avocado, if I would have bought an avocado, an avocado would cost me $1.49. So right there, if you're just looking at price-wise, the peas are going to be um, less expensive. And so that makes it for a really good um, alternative. Also with peas, they're less calories, they're less fat than avocados. That makes it for a good switch as well. And so, I have a fat too. So I can say I'm fat. But so for a half a cup of uh, peas, that's 62 calories. But if you had a half a cup of avocado, that would be 120 calories. So literally about half, it's literally double the amount of calories. So if you make that switch, like let's say you're making your own guacamole, and you make that switch to the um, peas, you'll literally be cutting your calories in half. I think that's pretty cool. But peas are kind of cool, actually. Let me tell you. So, like, they have 11 grams of, of carbs in a half a cup. But then there's also, when it comes to the fat, there's 4 grams of fat. Which is a sorry amount. But the thing is, with peas, they have 4 grams of protein in them as well in that half a cup serving. And so, to put that in perspective, most of your vegetables, if you have a half a cup of it, it's probably going to be 1 gram of protein or less. Sometimes it's like no protein at all. So the fact that you can get peas, so this is a good plant-based protein source as well. Like the peas have four grams of protein and only 62 calories. Like that's a really good, that's like a good bang for your buck if you're just trying to think of it that way. So that's a lot of protein and a not a lot of calories and a very small portion. So if you were going um, vegetarian, if you were just looking for a protein that's plant-based, um, peas would be a really good option for you. So yeah, um, peas also have are really high in vitamin A, and so they have 34. They have a cup. We have 34 percent of your vitamin A that you need. And vitamin A is really good for your immune system. It's good for your vision. It's also for your good for reproduction, like your reproductive organs. That's what vitamin A is really good for, right? And so, also it has a lot of vitamin K in it as well. It has 24 percent of your daily value or the daily recommended value of vitamin K. And vitamin K. It's really good for like blood clotting. It's good for bone metabolism. It helps regulate the calcium that's in your bones. Like it's really good for all those different things. Um, it's also high in vitamin C, which we know vitamin C is good for like growth and development and it helps your body repair itself. It helps your immune system, helps you ward off diseases. And it also has a good amount of iron in, in, in it as well. And so here's the thing. I don't like peas at all. Like when I get fried rice, like they have peas in it, and I'm like, oh, here we go. So I'll either like try to separate them out, like pick them out, or I'll just like stuff them in my mouth real quick and like try to like eat them real quick. Like I don't like peas. But one in this dip, I can't even taste that pea flavor. So you know peas are kind of sweet a little bit, and like uh, they kind of pop in your mouth. Like oh, I hate all, I hate all of it, right? But in this recipe, one I don't even taste the pea flavor. Like you just taste all the seasonings that you've added to it. Two. So like it makes it a lot easier to eat peas because I was not here for it, right? But then it's like I can now eat enjoy peas in a way that now I can get all these nutrients that I wasn't getting, you know, previously. So it's like, okay, maybe I can give this a try. Yes, I can post the recipe. And actually it's funny because like I've been saying I was gonna post all these recipes all this time and I just kept forgetting about it. But I'll definitely this one is super, super easy. So I'll get that one up today and I will go back through the other ones that the last two milk preps I've done and post those recipes as well, probably within the next week or so. But definitely I can post this one today because this one is super dope, super easy, super good. So yeah, so the other thing I just wanted to talk about and just kind of like bring to your attention, give you like, just talk about for a moment or whatever, is um, basically like, um, basically I was thinking of it kind of like, okay, is this healthy? So like um, one of my previous ones we talked about, I think it was when I was talking about the diets um, I think that was the lesson where I was kind of talking about the, the finding healthy. I think that was the one. And you can go back and check and, like, see that whole post or whatever. And so, like, the thing was, I was talking about, like, um, what is healthy. Because the thing is, it's like, before you start really talking about different diets, before you really start talking about um, what's healthy and what's not, like, you have to define it for yourself. 
And this is the thing is like sometimes people ask will ask me, well, is that diet healthy? Is that way of eating healthy? Is this food healthy? Is this not healthy? And my answer always is kind of like, well, it really depends. Like that's the thing. It really depends. And so like it really and is and I say that because it depends on like where are your goals? What are you trying to do? What are you trying to um um like manage what are your things that you're trying to like what's your goal as far as your weight are you trying to get more muscle are you trying to gain weight lose weight that determines whether something is healthy or not how long does it last in the fridge and will it turn brown like guacamole honestly well it'll last in the fridge like what you should do if you have the dip in the refrigerator you should get some um plastic wrap and like put it over the top let me show you so like i would get plastic wrap and make sure i actually touch the surface of the um dip so then that way you don't have to worry about turning brown or whatever but like three days is probably good because the thing is it's mostly like so if you're using parmesan cheese that's like the only like dairy or whatever in it um even with that though because parmesan cheese is so shelf stable that it will last a pretty long time so i would say you would want to you want to eat this within three days but like three days is pretty like a good amount of time that you can keep it uh, and I don't expect it to turn brown. Um, this is my first time making it. So, like, I've had this dip before, but this is my first time making it. So, I don't know if it'll turn brown. But if you just put the, um, and you could do this with guacamole as well. Like, if you have guacamole left over, if you make sure you put, like, the plastic wrap on the actual surface, it's less likely to turn brown. So, I think you could do the same with that dip. Like, good question, guys. I love when you guys ask questions because then I can talk to you guys. It's like, we're, we're here. We're right in the same room, right? So, anyways. So I wanted to show you guys this thing, right? Going back to whether or not something is healthy. And to kind of give you a better example of like you having to really say, okay, this is healthy, so this is healthy for me. Type thing. So I have two dressings, right? Um, I got both of these are Food Lion. Um, this is Sir Kensington's Avocado Oil Ranch. And this is regular old Food Lion Buttermilk Ranch dressing. They're both dressings, right? And so this sir kingsington one i got this one um because it is if you guys can see that um it's sugar free it's dairy free and it's gluten free now i don't really care about the gluten part of it but what i was really interested in was in the fact that it's sugar free and it's dairy free like I tell you guys i'm not really doing dairy right now and like a lot of times i found that it's kind of interesting is that everything we eat babe, like if you buy it in the store it's probably going to have sugar in it. And so I'm trying to find ways to eliminate, like, unnecessary sugar in, out of my diet. And because, like, the thing is, now, don't get me wrong. I like to eat pancakes. I like to eat brownies. I like to eat cookies, ice cream, candy, all that stuff. But at least, like, if I'm eating those things, I'm eating it because I want something sweet. I want to have that. And I recognize that those things have sugar in it. But when it comes to things like salad dressings or, like, like, I'm, if I'm eating a salad, I'm trying to be healthy. I don't need that extra sugar in it. Like, I'm trying to be healthy in this moment. Moment, I'm trying to have a, a healthy decision. And like, But the thing is, it has sugar in so many of the things that we eat that I'm trying to be a little bit more cautious of it. So when I found this dressing, I was like, oh, yeah, sugar-free and dairy-free. Like, like, okay, this is something. And so then the second one, it's, it's just regular old buttermilk ranch. Um, I'm trying to see, did they tell you? This one does not tell you. All right, so this has, if you can see it, one gram of sugar. It tells you right there. Um, sometimes in some labels, like, they say if the sugar is added sugar or not. That's something I've seen on labels more recently. Because the thing is, let's say you have a dressing that has a fruit in it, like a, a strawberry vinaigrette or something. That sugar could be coming from that actual strawberries, not actually added sugar. And so, like when sugars, when the sugar source is from a natural source, like the fruit or something, I don't necessarily mind it. Like this is cool. Like I'm totally cool with it. Like I'm still drinking like 100% juice, knowing that it has a lot of sugar in it, but because it's natural sugar, you know. I'm basically just trying to cut down on the regular uh, refined table sugar, you know that's added that's not necessary you know so i saw this dressing i was like cool this is great this doesn't have any um extra sugar in it or whatever but here's the thing though and this one is it, it, like i said it, <coughs> excuse me it's at harris teeter um you can find it at harris i mean not harris teeter. i got this from food lion so like it's, i feel like that's a pretty accessible store if you have food lion in your area 
There's also another one, Pioneer Woman. I saw like she has a show on the cooking on um, Food Network, Pioneer Woman. She has, she's like a redhead. Um, that's the best way I can describe her. She has some dressings out now too. They're also sugar free dairy. They're also I don't know if they're dairy free, but I know they're sugar free, and I thought that was interesting. So like, and I've seen those at Walmart. So if you were looking for like a sugar free dressing, like a sugar free ranch, that's one that's in Walmart, and you know Walmart is everywhere. So you'll probably be able to find that if you can't find this one. But here's the thing I want to kind of show you, um, guys. So for my dressing on this side, you can see that my um serving size is two tablespoons, right? And my other dressing, again, it's two tablespoons. So we're talking about the same amount of product, right? But here's the thing. When you go down to the calories, right here, there's 170 calories per two, two tablespoons, right? If you look at this regular ranch, there's only 120 calories in it. So when we're talking thing is healthy this thing, this product is healthy this other product is not healthy well how do you determine that and it's really like i said it's ba it depends and it's based on what your goals are what you're trying to do what your body needs in that moment so for me personally like the healthy quote-unquote healthy option would be the uh sugar-free dairy-free option because it doesn't have the added sugar it doesn't have any dairy in it and i'm not doing sugar that i added sugar or dairy right now so that's the healthier option if you're just trying to lose weight though like and you're counting your calories and the calories are what are important to you the regular um food lion buttermilk ranch is the better option it's a healthier option as well because it has fewer calories literally has 50 less calories in that one than the um the one that is the sugar-free and dairy-free so it's like when you're trying to make healthy decisions for yourself you really have to take a mind of okay what's healthy for me what where are my goals what is it that is going to help me reach my goals? And you have to go based off that. Just because it's in the health food aisle, just because it's at a health store doesn't mean it's healthy or that it's right for you. It might be healthy for somebody, but it might not be healthy for you. So like, I want us to start paying more attention to like the labels, reading our labels, being mindful of what we're actually putting in our bodies, and making the actual conscious decision of, okay, this is what, this is what I need, and this is what's going to work for me. You say you can't do anything with two tablespoons of ranch. Actually, you can do a lot with two tablespoons of ranch. Like, if you do the whole, like, put it to the side and dip method, your ranch go a lot further that way. Or if you get, like, a big old bowl and, like, toss it, your ranch will go a lot, your dressing will go a lot further that way. So, yeah, that was just that. And that's just something to be kind of mindful of. Gee, you silly. <laughs> so, the last one I want to talk about is, um, I'm trying to make sure my lighting, because, like, I didn't have the light on first, because it was, like, a big glare, but, y'all know. So, anyways, um, just, it's detox season, and I keep hearing detoxes, detoxes, detoxes. I need a detox. I need a detox. Oh, yeah, and the thing is, is, like, the health industry is really on, like, full-on detox mode, because everybody wants that summer body. They want to get ready for the summertime. They want to look their best. Be, you've been eating, <coughs> excuse me, all this heavy food all winter long long and now the health injury has told us oh it's clogging up your body that's why you have excess weight and that's what they're telling us right and so now we feel like all oh, this panic that oh i need a detox i need a detox no you don't okay so let's break this down again we talked about this before but just because it's detox it's literally detox season and everybody's like going crazy over it i figured it'd be cool to like talk about it again and also to just bring up like a uh, um article that i've just found so I'm about to pull this up since I remember how. Okay. Let me put you guys down for a sec. You can always look at my kitchen or whatever. Okay. So I have this article. It's from the it's from NIH. Let me turn you guys this way so you can see me a little bit better. Okay, it's from NIH which is the National Institute of Health. And they basically talked about this whole detox cleansing thing. And like, <coughs> excuse me, that's, they basically talked about similar things that I talked about in my previous video about um, demystifying the diets. That was the video where I broke down different diets. And the first one I talked about was detoxes. And the thing is, it's like, people will say, oh, well, it worked because I lost all this weight in this short amount of time. But like the thing is, you weren't really eating, so that's why you lost weight, not because of the specific concoction of juices and spices. That didn't do anything for you. The fact you weren't eating is why you lost that weight. 
But the thing is, is once you start eating again regularly, you're probably going to gain that weight right back. That's the, that's just the bottom line of it, you know? Um, a lot of times, some people are convinced that they work because, like, their urine might turn a different color or smell different or whatever. But the thing is, if you even if you take vitamins, like, or even, and you don't have to go as far as vitamins, but some vitamins do that as well. But also, like, if you ever had, like, asparagus, like, it literally turns your urine a different color. It has a different smell to it, like, and that's just because of different vitamins and minerals that are in asparagus. Or if you have just regular vitamin minerals that you take or you, that you just started taking, like, it comes out in your urine. So anything excess, like, if it's a water-soluble vitamin, it's going to go right straight through you. If there's any excess that your body doesn't need, because your body needs a certain amount, it's a different percentage, well, it's a different amount of, like, a different amount depending on the different vitamins. And so, like, whatever your body needs, your body's going to take out from that vitamin or from that food source, right? But if there's anything extra, extra and it's, like, a water-soluble one, it's going to come straight out in your urine. So that's why your urine may smell different. That's why your um, urine may have a different color. You're not detoxing. That's literally all those vitamins. So you just spent all this money on vitamins and all this money on detox and all this stuff. It literally just went straight through you. And it's crazy, right? The vitamins that are fat-soluble, so that's your vitamin A, that's your vitamin K, the ones we talked about that are actually in the um, bean dip, that the pea dip that I just made, those are fat-soluble. So those aren't going to go straight through you. They're going to um, be absorbed in your fat, like in your fatty tissue, basically. And your body is just going to hold it until it needs it. But the thing is, you don't want to stock up on those vitamins. Like, and the thing is, so I don't freak you guys out, it's really hard to overdose on the vitamins. Like, it's just really hard. You literally have to be taking specific vitamin A supplement where you're just, and you're taking ridiculously amounts. So it's not like you can eat this, like, too much. Or, to, like, you have a multivitamin and some carrots that day, you're going to OD on vitamin a you won't you'll be fine but just know that um you can't reach a toxic level if you have too much and that's when you start having adverse health health effects but that's not something the general public has to worry about because we don't we're not going to consume that much anyway but um just based off this article though <coughs> it's basically talking about um the main point of it is, though, because some people will say, like, oh, well, it's, it has to work because it has to be FDA approved. And I actually want to show you guys something, right? So, like, I take, I take um, fish oil, cod liver oil. I take in the pill variety. I don't know what the so-called claim for fish oil is. The only reason why I take it, and I'm taking it right now, because I'm literally getting over a cold, which is why I'm not eating dairy right now. Like, I've had a cold last week, and that's why I'm still kind of, like, coughing and congested right now. I take fish oil because... Fish oil literally like helps drain, like helps you get rid of that excess mucus. That's the only reason why I take it, right? And it doesn't even say that. It's interesting, like it doesn't even. Um, that's not the health claim that fish oils will have. I think it might be something like some of them have omega threes in it. So whatever omega threes do, they'll advertise it at some time. But here's the statement. That's the kicker, right? So it says this statement has not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent, or, or prevent any disease. So literally on the bottles on vitamins, a lot of vitamins and supplements, <coughs> they'll, they'll say these different health claims, right? But they will then have that little asterisk by it, and they'll say, like, oh, this hasn't been regulated. So some people believe, oh, well, the FDA regulates all the stuff we eat and drink, right? So then if this the detox teas or whatever are on the market, then they must be regulated. And so they must work. And so they must be, they just must be. And of course, that makes logical sense, right? But the part that we usually miss is that when the, on the statements where they say like, hey, this isn't, this isn't meant to cure anything. This isn't meant to diagnose or treat anything. It's not meant to prevent anything. It literally has never been evaluated. And so that right there tells us like, okay, just because it's on the market doesn't mean it actually does anything. It could literally, like, because you have to, like, depending on the claims you make determines how you have, how you can market something, how you can label something. So as long as you say on there somewhere that this isn't actually intended to cure anything, it's not intended to, like, prevent disease or anything like that, you can sell anything and call it what you want. Like, I can get a bottle of water and tell you, oh, it's going to make you, you know, as long as I put, wherever I was, I was about to say something crazy, I don't know, but, like, as long as I say that, oh, it's not intended to do those real things for real, I'm good to go. And so, like, don't put your faith in the fact that, oh, because it's on the shelves, that means it works. No, they typically don't. And so, like, you'll have, a lot of times they'll have, like, 
I'll see these long lists of like, oh, if you mix lemon with cayenne pepper, this is gonna do this specific thing, or this, this, and this, like ginger and cucumber is gonna detox this, or this and this is gonna detox your liver. The way they come up with this stuff, it's based off like actual science, but it's very loosely. Like they'll say, okay, carrots are good. They are carrots are high in vitamin A. Vitamin A um, helps with your um, that your um, vision. So if you drink this carrot juice, it's gonna detox your eyes because you know you see a lot and you processing a lot and a lot of stuff gets in your eyes. So that means you need to detox your eyes. And they'll have you sitting there like, you right. Yeah, I do look at a lot of stuff. Oh, dust do get in my eyes a lot. And so then they sold you, and then they tell you, oh, yeah, this thing's going to cure that. It's going to fix everything. Everything's going to be brand new. So, like, the, the basis of it was just, okay, carrots are high in vitamin A. Vitamin A does this. It's true. That's not wrong. It's not incorrect. But the thing is, it's like, well, you, one, would have already gotten those vitamins and minerals without having to drink this one specific product or consume this one specific thing. But then also it's just the fact that um, if you're detoxing or detoxing like the way they tell you to do it, it's like, and then they always, you know, they will promise all oh, the weight loss. The weight loss comes from the fact that you're now in a, cal a calorie deficit because you're not eating. Because the only thing you're doing is drinking. That's why you're losing weight. But it's not weight loss that's going to stay for a long time. And so this is one of the things I get a little hype on. Like, like, oh, no, people, hey, everybody, stop what you're doing. Put the detox teas down. You don't need them. Because the thing is, as long as you eat a regular diet that's balanced, like eat a vegetable every now and then. Every now and then eat your vegetables and fruit. You're good to go. You don't have to worry about these things. And, like, the thing is, if you feel like you need to detox a lot, because the thing is, like, let's say you had a lot of, like, fast food or processed food, like, sodium, like, heavy food. The only detox you then need to do is just to drink water, like to drink some water to flush out your system. Because that's the only thing those detox things are doing. They're just flushing out your system. So they're basically water with just some additives in it, with some extra vitamins in it. But it's not like it's going to make that big of a difference. And so basically, just save you some money to and drink some water. That's all I got to tell you about that, honestly. So like, we might not win the detox battle today. But if I can let somebody know, hey, you don't really have to detox. Just drink you some water, save that extra money, and eat, take a vitamin, and you, you'll be good to go. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was fun. Those were the only things I wanted to talk about today. If you have any questions, you can post them, or you can put them in the comments, and I'll get back to you later. I will be putting that um, recipe up as soon as I get off here, um, so you guys can try it when you get home. Um, let me see what else. So, yeah. Um, we're still doing our prayer challenge. Um, you guys can join in. It's been really amazing. Like, you can see my videos. And I've had, I labeled them with, like, testimony. They all have the same hashtag, Mark 1124 prayer challenge. So you can see my testimonies about how God has just been really awesome, moving really, moving really amazingly in my life just based off of the, um, based off of the, uh, things I pray and that I believe God for. Uh, you say, yes, I have free water to detox. You're right. Get that tap water. Don't spend, you know. A bunch of money because the thing is those detox drinks are expensive like you do like a three-day cleanse like there's a juice bar here um and like those cleanses are expensive and so like save you some money drink just drink some water right <laughs> but yeah so guys if you get on this challenge it will tr truly truly i believe bless you like god has been showing up in so many amazing ways and like just my testimonies alone but then the testimonies of others just have been really encouraging so they're doing this just so we can increase in our faith and grow closer to God. And I think that's really awesome. So, again, this was our third Thursday. I'll be back next month. I'll probably do a different like, recipe. Kind of like the same format because I kind of really like this one. I think this is really cool. And so I'm just glad, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, share this video when it goes off. Let other people see it. Tag them in it. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Do what you got to do so other people can see this because I think this is pretty cool content. And it's, like, free. So, like, let's get it out there. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I, I will talk to you guys later.